Kylian Mbappe to leave PSG as free agent. The 25-year-old has informed PSG president Nasser al khalafi regarding his decision. Star attacker Kylian Mbappe has informed Nasser al khalafi the president of Paris Saint-Germain, PSG, that he will leave the club after the end of the season as a free agent. As per renowned journalist Fabrizio Romano, the terms of the departure are yet to be fully agreed upon. PSG and Mbappe will communicate together about the latter's exit in the upcoming months. Earlier, La Parisienne reported that PSG have decided to prepare a mega-money offer to make their Mbappe stay for two more years. Mbappe has been a long-standing target for Real Madrid in recent years, but a move to the Santiago Bernabeu has yet to materialize. However, recent reports from multiple news outlets suggested that Mbappé is edging closer to resolving the transfer saga by opting to join Los Blancos on a free transfer when his contract expires at the end of the season. While Mbappé seems to be nearing a switch to the Spanish capital, PSG remain hopeful of retaining the Frenchman's services. PSG is willing to offer the forward a two-year contract worth nearly £70 million after tax for each season. With PSG keen on keeping their star player, they are also ready to provide guaranteed bonuses and advertising contracts from Qatar. Earlier speculation suggested that Mbappe had informed Real Madrid of his desire to receive 50 million euros, 43 million pounds, annually to join Carlo Ancelotti's side. There were expectations that Mbappe would announce his intention to leave PSG before the second leg of the Champions League last 16 tie against Real Sociedad on March 5. However, Real Madrid is reportedly concerned about the delay as uncertainty persists over the player's future. Meanwhile, La Liga president Javier Tebez recently suggested that there is more than a 50% chance of Mbappe joining Real Madrid this summer. Mbappe joined the Parisian side in 2017 from Monaco, initially on a loan deal, before signing a two-year contract extension in 2021. He has subsequently gone on to return a staggering 243 goals in 290 appearances for the club, netting his 44th goal Champions League goal last night. Junior Hoylet Aberdeen signed Canada winger after Vancouver Whitecaps exit. Canada winger Junior Hoylet has joined Aberdeen until the end of the season after leaving Vancouver Whitecaps. The 33-year-old, who has 62 caps, previously worked with Don's interim manager Neil Warnock at Queen's Park Rangers and Cardiff City. Warnock told the Aberdeen website, He's played for me three times, so I know him inside out. He's an international player, and I think he'll benefit the squad between now and the end of the season. Hoylet came through the Blackburn Rovers Academy and broke into the first team after loan spells with Paderborn and St. Pauli in the German second tier. Having left Reading, he made nine appearances, only two of them starts, as Vancouver finished sixth in the Western Conference last season and made his latest appearance for his country against Jamaica in November. Hoylet reckons it was a no-brainer to link up again with Warnock. It's a great opportunity, and I'm just happy at the prospect of getting back out there playing football again under a manager who knows how to get the best out of the squad," he said. I've no doubt he'll get everyone working together. I still have a lot of fire in me for the game. I want to enjoy playing football again. I have been keeping fit training with reading and just waiting for the right opportunity to come along. When the gaffer phoned, it was a blessing. I can tell already from the welcome, I've had that it's a great club. Man City boss Pep Guardiola, not the man to tell Erling Haaland how to score. Even the very best strikers occasionally have a day to forget, as Erling Haaland found in his side's draw against Chelsea on Saturday. The Premier League's top scorer had nine shots without scoring, his most in a single game without getting a goal in any of his 79 appearances for Manchester City. They were good chances too, especially the cross that Kevin De Bruyne put on a plate for the Norwegian with the hosts trailing 1-0 late on. Haaland was right in front of goal when he met it, but the ball flew horribly wide. At that stage, it appeared City's long unbeaten run at Etihad Stadium, going back to November 2022, was about to end, but Rodri had other ideas, with his 83rd-minute strike finally breaking Chelsea's resistance. City could not find a winner and have lost ground to Liverpool and Arsenal in the title race, 
but their manager Pep Guardiola put the blame for a draw on a poor first-half performance, rather than the inability of his star striker to find the net. Will Bayern Munich and Real Madrid be upset by the underdogs? The leagues in Germany and Spain have produced unlikely title contenders this season, and Saturday could prove to be a pivotal day as the underdogs take on the traditional powerhouses. In the Bundesliga, Bayer Leverkusen are top of the table and host Bayern Munich, who are second and two points behind Xabi Alonso's side. In La Liga, Corona traveled to Real Madrid knowing a victory would take them above Carlo Ancelotti's side and into first place. BBC Sport takes a close look at the two fixtures that may prove hugely significant in who ultimately wins the league titles. Leverkusen threatening to thwart Kane's trophy hopes when Harry Kane moved from Tottenham to Bayern in August, it seemed like the end of his long wait for a trophy was a foregone conclusion. The German giants have won the Bundesliga every season since missing out in 2011-12, but in Kane's first campaign their hopes of continuing that run are coming under real threat from Leverkusen. Alonso's side are top with an incredible 52 points from a possible 60, form that has seen their head coach linked with Liverpool. Bayern are just behind on 50, and this is the first time in Bundesliga history that two teams have collected 50 points after 20 matches. As top of the table games go, it doesn't get much bigger, with Bayern having to travel to the Bay Arena knowing a victory would put them top of the table, but defeat would leave them five adrift. Bayern were pushed all the way last season as well, with Borussia Dortmund only missing out on the title on the final day of the season. Art Leverkusen set to end Bayern's Bundesliga reign? German football journalist Raphael Honigstein said on the BBC Football Daily Euroleads podcast, What is different this year compared to recent years, where Bayern have looked vulnerable and other teams look like they might make it? It was because Bayern were having a poor season, but this year Bayern are having a great season. They have 50 points. Leverkusen have 52 from 60. It is unbelievable consistency. It is not a case of Bayern being weak and another team being good. Bayern are decent and another team is playing on a level that seems almost unsustainable. The big factor in Bayern Munich's favor is Kane. Harry Kane celebrates scoring a goal for Bayern Munich. Harry Kane's 24 Bundesliga goals have come in 20 games this season. The England captain has had a brilliant first season in Germany and is the league's top scorer with 24 goals. Despite that impressive record, Kane is determined to be even better in the second half of the campaign. He told BBC Sport, We have a big game coming up this week of course against Leverkusen, and we have plenty more important matches to go this year, so I'm hoping I can even improve from the first half of the season. I always try and get better. I'm at Bayern Munich, who have won the league for the last 11 years, so there's an expectation to win that league this year. Of course, Leverkusen have started amazingly well and still undefeated, so it's a really important game this weekend which I'm excited for. Borussia Dortmund beat Freiburg in another Bundesliga game, delayed by protests against an investment proposal by the German Football Association. After 36 minutes, tennis balls and chocolate gold coins were thrown onto the pitch from fans in the Dortmund section to cause a 10-minute delay. Home captain M. Merkin spoke to supporters before the game restarted. Dortmund clinched the win thanks to two goals from Daniel Malin and one from Nicholas Fulkrug on his 31st birthday. After Fulkrug's goal, England winger Jadon Sancho came on as an 88th-minute substitute and had a shot saved by Noah Atubolu and headed the rebound wide. Sancho, looking for his first Dortmund goals since returning to the club on loan from Manchester United, also had another chance but could not direct a volley goalbound. Aiden Terzic's side are unbeaten in eight competitive matches since a 3-2 home loss to RB Leipzig on 9 December. In December, a majority vote by German clubs approved a proposal to sell some Bundesliga TV rights in exchange for investment capital. Supporters threw tennis balls onto the pitch during Bochum's 3-0 win over Union Berlin in December, and there was a 12-minute stoppage during Heidenheim's 1-1 draw with Wolfsburg last month as part of league-wide protests. 
On 20 January, Dortmund's 4-0 victory at Kalam was subject to an 8-minute delay with tennis balls and gold coins thrown onto the pitch from fans from both teams. On Friday, there was also a protest during Hanover's 4-3 win over Hamburg in Bundesliga 2. Hamburg fans chained six padlocks to the goal and netting at halftime, three locks to either post at one end, with the padlocks having to be cut off before play could resume. In the dortmund freiburg match, a number of tennis balls and chocolate gold coins were thrown onto the pitch behind the goal the hosts were defending in the first half. Dortmund goalkeeper Gregor Kobal was shown kicking and juggling one of the tennis balls while the objects were removed. Banners were also held up by fans, with one sign saying, no to investors in the DFL, German Football League. More tennis balls were thrown onto the pitch after 60 minutes, but that did not result in a lengthy stoppage.